but while doing the artwork it's pretty much non-stop doubt moments of like oh great by the way that is very fleeting and is there for a moment and maybe not there the next day i've drawn things that i was really happy when i finished them and i come back the next day and think that is dog shit what were you thinking and yeah. then i've had the opposite where i was drawing doing something that i hated non-stop the whole time i was drawing it and then I saw it a year later and thought, oh, that's actually all right. Hey guys, I recently had the chance to visit concept artist Greg Broadmore at Weta Workshop in Wellington, New Zealand. If you're not familiar with him, Greg is known for doing a bunch of the concept design on District 9, Avatar, and King Kong. Here's a clip from District 9 showcasing a couple of the alien guns he designed. I sat down with him and recorded him doing a page for an upcoming graphic novel he's written and illustrated, and talked to him about his process on creativity. Greg's an art machine and his insights were awesome. When I talk to people about artwork and making comics or illustrations, there's normally like a huge amount of self-doubt and a huge amount of like second guessing when it comes to image making. Do you have any thoughts on that or like, like how, mm -hmm. do you, how do you just start, you know? That's almost the number one problem. When you're trying to draw, you're trying to fall into that place where you stop second guessing, the flow state. And that's almost yeah. the point of it in a way. What is like these, I think it's a couple aspects of the drawing one and you're trying to present something visualize something that's in your imagination or whatever and show it to other people maybe but then the other part is just the pure pleasure or or not even sure if it's pleasure just that state of being in flow and not making front brain, brain rational choices just going with your intuition that's i think that's a big part of what illustration is at all and how do you get to it that is the challenge because as soon as Especially if you're trying to make something structured. This is a graphic novel. Of course, these are comic pages. And as you're and they're trying to tell a story, so I've got a hundred things in my head. I've got what I've written down. I need to try and be faithful to the story. I need to try and include all these elements. I'm trying to be a, a cameraman and come at, uh, from the right angle and all yeah. this sort of stuff. But at the same time, I'm trying to get out of my own way and think about none of that, just be in the drawing. Yeah. And those two things are in opposition. They're fighting each other. One's trying to wake you up and one's trying to, to put you into a sleep. The part of it is just drawing. Yeah. You just start, and even if it's not working, you just keep on doing it. And then eventually, before you even know it, hopefully you've fallen into that state. Um, and the other way is alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to drugs and alcohol, just say no. I was yeah. telling you the other day that um, drinking a beer or two, that just like gets rid of inhibitions. Yeah. I don't recommend yeah. it all the time. Maybe yeah. most, maybe it doesn't work for many people. Yeah. But um. If I'm completely blocked, I'll literally just have a have a beer or two, and that wipes out my inhibitions, and I and I start making the first choice, and it so sort of puts you automatically almost into a flow state. Yeah. I think that's why people like alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I write, when I've written the story, I write out every single panel, so I do know in advance what's going to happen, yeah. and when I when I'm writing it, I am visualizing it as well. Yeah. But the weird thing is, while I'm writing it. I see each page and panel where I feel it. It's not, you know, not, not like a pu perfect vision. I can really feel what the, um, what the story will look like. But by the time I draw it, honestly, it doesn't look anything like that. I'm pretty sure that the vision I had in my head when I was writing it is, is um, gone. Yeah. Uh, but that's fine. But yeah, it is very... When I'm, draw when I'm writing it, I really know what I want to draw. You shouldn't let any preparation get in the way of art because what's the yeah. risk? It's yeah. the, there's no risk. The only risk is maybe uh, feeling shame at someone else looking at it, and I've yeah. definitely been through that. I've made whole comic books before when I was young when I didn't show anyone or maybe a very few friends. Yeah. I totally get it, but that's only the real that's the only real risk, and that's a silly risk, right? It's like it's not real. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing really at stake. So you should just do it. There's, um, you shouldn't. I think um, if you want to make a piece of art, no matter what it is, games, movies, drawings, music, you just start making it. And just accepting the fact that it'll be limited in its own by who you are at that time. The hardest part as an artist, especially now with Instagram, it's very easy to compare yourself to yeah. how good or famous everyone is, or at least seems to be. And yeah, I still get that. Uh, I've been doing this forever, and I still look on Instagram yeah. and go, holy shit, how did they do that? That's yeah. not possible. Yeah, well, you start you think in lots more layers. So um, there's, there's what's happening in the story. But then there's the, what, what the lines and the drawing are doing and how they try and amplify the story. You know, that's a classic comic book yeah. technique of trying to capture the energy or like and there's some of these pages at the start where I've got all these jagged rocks. The jagged rocks are actually all pointing. Yeah. They're literally pointing to different things on the page. Right. And some of that is completely accidental. 
But then when I notice it, or I realize I've done it, then I amplify it, and then I start doing more of it. Um, uh, and so I think that's part of it. When you, when, you know, if something amplifies the moment that you're trying to get across in a panel yep. or in a drawing, if you notice that it makes it even stronger, it's like, well, do, do more of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one there is the, um, that's the page I started. I just, I don't think I drew this one today, yeah. but that is the page precedes us where the, um, the yeah. girls are being chased down by this massive Rex. Uh, the story itself for the whole comic is a little, is a little not exactly what you would expect. It's bizarre and, a, and out there in a way that is uh, interesting. You know? yeah. Do you have any thoughts on like your decision to go with something like this versus something that is potentially more commercial? Or As you say, it's, people say that to me all the yeah. time. It's yeah. that um, it's weird or unusual left to yeah. feel to something, but that's not what it appears to me. Yeah, everything is entirely uh, makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know if rational is the right word, but it, it all has an in total internal logic, and I don't think it's weird. I know from experience that other people will find it weird. Yeah, just because if, uh, when I do something that is very pure to me, that's quite often the reaction I've ex- yeah. received. It's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. That's different, and I'm like, oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't realize it was. Yeah. So um, uh, I definitely don't try and make anything commercial in the sense that um, I, I, with art, and with this particular art, with making this comic book, I'm trying to discover something about myself and about the universe. And it's, a me- it's not just a means of expressing, expressing what I feel. I'm actually trying to make sense of things. If I'm really trying to do that, it's a bit like science, you know, you, you just got to trust the data. And in this case, the data is the things that you feel. And I feel plenty of things. So there's like an endless well there, at least there is at the moment. And so I don't need an external thing telling me what it should be. And I know there are plenty of external factors that would say, if you did this, it'd be more successful. But I, my reaction to that would be, but if I did that, it would be less true. Yeah. And it's not that something that's successful is not true, not at all. It's just that the thing that I've come up with it is its own truth, and I wouldn't bend it to make it more palatable or make it more um, commercially successful or fit certain demographic. I have done stuff like that before. I totally get that way of thinking. I mean, I've made worked on some pretty big projects where you where I've had to like cut the edges off things. Yeah. It all depends on money as well, right? This yeah. is a at the end of the day, this is a graphic novel and comic book, and the only thing that's at risk is me, really. Yeah. You know, um, and so I don't have to worry about. Um, burning some millions of someone's dollars and as soon as you're burning millions of someone's dollars well then you might need to start thinking about demographics because you've got to pay all those millions of dollars back but this is just my graft at the end of the day there's some other people taking a risk with with me which is nice but they trust that um hopefully what i'm doing is is worth you know has worth yeah so um yeah it's it's that i'm I'm trying to trust my intuition It's, it's not even trusting your intuition it's written it and when i've drawn it i feel that it's true or it's as true as i can make it and so i'm not trying to it's up to the audience after that so i know when i've finished it me and the universe are whole yeah you know we're we're good like i've done my best yeah and then it would be then it's cool after that if other people want to read it and judge it in their own way and that's that's fine um that's like a a secondary thing but in the making of the art like it is just what it is and and we're good Know. so yeah there's no need to have some sort of external right. um, pressure on it to tilt it around yeah. in fact that would be counter to the whole pursuit I've heard the entire like endeavor of our making described as more diary entries than you know commerce or any of that kind of stuff and Rick Rubin was saying that you you know you, you wouldn't judge somebody based off their diary entries you know <laughs> based off like whose diary entries are more relatable or more popular or whatever personal nature of it I think is where the real art comes in and then the audience comes in almost at, at, as an accident you know for for tolkien for lord of the rings i read that he started it because uh london or england really had no uh lore or uh, mythology going mythology, back mythology yeah 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 he's making english english mythology well you, you know he was doing that as as uh, as more of a an, an academic study or an, an yeah. academic project versus it being a fantasy novel and i just suspect that his audience that are the people around him might have thought it was a very weird bizarre thing for him to be doing yeah i don't know um how he really thought of it yeah i have heard that that he um thought it was a um was making a mythology an alternate mythology for england or a yeah. mythology for england which is really interesting that's quite meta and i'm not i would wonder who are you doing that for he must i guess yeah. he's just doing it for himself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A, exactly yeah, yeah study unto itself 
what the way it tends to work, right, when there's money involved, especially large chunks of money to make a film or a game or something like that, or any piece of art that just takes a lot of um, yeah. effort and multiple people and investment, the people want to, the people who who aren't really making it, who are putting in the money, justifiably want to know that it will make their money back, and so they want to go like, what worked before, right? And if you follow that. I don't have, by the way, I don't have anything. That's a good way to make certain types of things. It's just not a great way to make anything that's... Um, brand new. Brand new and exciting, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not even a good way to make something that's true. It's just a yeah. way of repeating what worked in the past. And those are things that were true in the past, but there's a diminishing returns aspect to that, right? If you make something that was true in the past, I mean, true in the sense that it emotionally resonated with yeah. people, you're just making an echo of that. And you can't really make a stronger echo than the thing you're copying. Yeah. And it's just going to be an echo. Um, and so the people that make really interesting things, Mad Max or Star Wars or you yeah. know, Lord of the Rings, those are things that the artist was not making a literal echo. They might have been echoing really deep, fundamental things, but no one else saw that. Yeah. Right? They made something that just felt true to them. Yeah, you talk to people where it's like they're just trying to talk with the muse or something, and it's almost uh, accidental or they can't even explain or, or they don't even feel like the person who had created that, that thing that... And yeah. come out that's falling into the flow state isn't it and there is something that's like a music any anything you do art wise it's creative if you really like it afterwards or if you look back at it later on and really enjoy it it's like it, you didn't do it that's that's kind of a crazy thing yep. it makes you it does make you wonder where it came from it yep. does feel magical i'm not a magical person i'm a real i probably talk like that a lot of the time yep. but i'm i really love science i'm a very i love engineering no, I'm fascinated by those kind of things, yeah. but um, but there is something truly magical about you participating in art and then witnessing it again later on and going like, where did that come from? That I don't think that was me. Yeah, right. that's that's weird, man. That makes you think yeah. that the universe is much more cosmic than it yeah. is, and maybe it is. I have yeah. no idea. Well, the, uh, you know, the, the the fact that we can have very similar experiences with art, and I'm from San Diego, and you're from halfway around the world or on the yeah. other side of the planet, and we're talking about this stuff. We're like, oh, of course, the muse, of course, the, yeah. you know, <laughs> for any students or something listening to this, you know, somebody that might feel like they're uh, struggling with finding their own voice or starting a personal project or anything, do, uh, do you have any advice or thoughts on that? Or mm. Well, as far as starting a project goes, it's easy. You just got to do it. Yeah. Just stop making excuses and do it. Yeah. yeah. And it really is that simple. Yeah. And start even if it, even if you don't know how, just start. Yeah. I would say that even for a lot of people, some people steer more academic and they do try and think about things more and then and if that works for you that's cool some people might spend their whole life learning and then just do it all and do something later on and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that but from i think a lot of people that's a rare thing to happen most people are thinking that it's really hard right and that they won't be good enough and um and therefore they'll invent excuses in their head not to start or to put it off and the reality is, n yeah, you're not good enough. Yeah. Right? You, you won't be good. And it's not to everyone else. Yeah. It's to you. You won't be good enough. Yeah. But that's, you just have to suck that up and push past it anyway. Right. Just, you've just got to start. Um, the more you do that, the more often you do that, the better you will get. Um, and so, yeah, just do it. Finding their own, their own truth, I don't know, that's just yeah. like a lifelong pursuit, isn't it? Yeah. That's just something you kind of got to keep on intuiting and, and working at and throwing yourself at the problem that is the universe and seeing what well, that comes back. And often that problem has nothing to do with draftsmanship. Or zero percent of it is, is draftsmanship. Yeah. It's like, you know, for, for, uh, for you, I'm sure your music that you create uh, plays into your art and mm -hmm. your images somehow and stuff. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Music is such a big thing. I was, they're, they're all part of the same thing, music and drawing. Um, yeah, they're just different mechanically. Like music, uh, drawing is like um, you fall into a flow state, which is nice, and that's the. Um, but really, it's m it's like this long term, long time scale pursuit. Yeah. You could be drawing for hours or days. Whereas music is like the moment you play a note, the feeling yeah. you're, that you are after, and even in drawing, the feeling that you're after is the, happens immediately. Right. So music is so incredible. Yeah. Um, they seem similar, but they are. That's a random thing. Drawing feels like a. I don't, this is a, this is a t slight change of subject, I suppose. But like, drawing feels like a accident or a car wreck. Yeah. The whole time I was telling you about the evil Knievel, it feels like 
every time I draw it, I start a drawing and I've got a blank page, I do feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? I feel like I'm, I might as well be starting at zero. And then I kind of have to remind myself that, you know, no, you've done this heaps. You should be, able, should be able to do it. But anyway, so I start drawing. And actually while I'm drawing, since I've been drawing probably since I was six, as students start to move the pencil, it's like, ah, this is okay. Okay, you know what you're doing. And I liken it to Evil Knievel, like a, or someone doing a stunt jump over the Grand Canyon. As I'm drawing, doing the pencils, it's like I'm accelerating at the ramp, right? And suddenly like, oh, cool. They, this motorbike is picking up speed. Yeah. We're going. The drawing is happening. And then at a certain point as the drawing starts to crystallize, I've hit the ramp. And then you realize, oh, oh fuck, is this, does this drawing make any sense? Should I yeah. have done this? Now I'm starting to render it, right? Go, maybe, maybe I'm in Photoshop and I'm starting to color it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm in the air. I'm across the canyon, and I realized, oh, you're not going, you weren't going fast enough. Yeah. You definitely weren't going fast enough. And holy fuck, the front wheel just fell off. Yeah. And <laughs> now you're pressing every lever, revving the engine that can't do anything, yeah. right? And just scrambling. And it feels like the bike is falling apart underneath you, and everything's going wrong. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I need to land over there on that other ramp, but I don't fucking see how that's possible. <laughs> and then finally as the image comes together it coalesces and some little details catch your eye i start to finish the image and that's me landing on the ramp yeah. and i realize i survived i did it i made it to the other side but just that's the feeling every time yeah. every single time i do a drawing and that is 10 percent is the acceleration at the ramp 10 percent is the landing 80 percent in the middle there's this feeling of existential, what the fuck are you doing? You <laughs> yeah. are going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not die literally, but like the feeling of like, that was, this was a stupid decision. You yeah. cannot draw. You can't paint. What, are you, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Yeah. And so you just have to, have to go with it because you're in the air and flying forward. Got to yeah. land it. Quality of an artist, uh, whether you want to call it that or not, uh, is your ability to deal with those feelings. Because I know from experience, everyone has that same mm. or similar sort of feelings and I, I think often uh, again draftsmanship or uh, taking classes or studying can be a uh, you know a, a procrastination tool to going through and actually trying to create art you mm-hmm. know, and, go, and go through those feelings I've always liked personally just jumping in and doing it that's probably why I like punk music yeah this, um, I always I love music from the moment when I was a kid and I watched um, Back to the Future Marty McFly playing guitar I was like oh fuck that looks like the best thing ever yeah. I'd like to do that and then when you finally get my hands on a guitar, it's like, you can only make yeah, these no nullifying idea. noises. <laughs> yeah. And you realize, oh, fuck, you got to learn. I was like, well, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. But then, um, then I heard the Misfits, and I was yeah. Misfits, this is like, you know, 20 years later or 10 years later or whatever. And it um, sounds like the best noise ever. Yeah. And, um, and then someone gave me a bass, and I realized I can play Misfits songs with these two notes that are like a semitone apart, or yeah. sorry, a, a, a full tone apart, just going backwards and forwards. And it's like, holy shit, I can play the Misfits. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it, you know, the Misfits was no less amazing than fucking Beethoven to me. Yeah, right. right. They're just as incredible. And once you realize, I can make that sound that feels like that, yeah. that that's that punk rock spirit, which I love. Yeah. And I try and, I think they try and do that with all my art. Yeah. Of like, don't let, um, don't let your um, lack of talent get in the way of your ambition. It sort of seems like everyone is just looking for that confidence to be able to create stuff. Took me around like the main Weta office this morning and you, you and Richard were sc- scrolling on a whiteboard for something. You would expect uh, Richard at his scale of what he's operating to be, you know, way more high level, but he's actually still yeah. executing on, uh, on, on rel- relatively small projects. And, yeah. you know, it's that confidence to be like, okay, yes, I, I can do this. I yeah. can try this out. It doesn't matter if it's a small thing or a big thing. You're just applying your confidence yeah. and your creativity. I think that's the story of Weta. That's like yeah. If you speak to Richard, I mean, that's the ethos of how they made Lord of the Rings. Um, and everything that led up to it was a number, well, in New Zealand you call it number eight wire, which yeah. is that you make, fix anything on the farm with a bit of number eight wire. If your yeah. tra- tractor starts leaking, you know, grab some number eight wire, it's the fencing wire that you use. And that's, that's Weta's philosophy, that's Richard's attitude. And that's a very, um, yeah, you don't, just because you don't know how to do it, it's like, well, if you apply yourself yeah. and then have a really high standard and then don't stop, you know, you will solve it. You know, at least you, that, that's, or maybe you won't solve it. That's the only chance you'll have solving it. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you're a really experienced industry veteran with all the skills in the world or a complete beginner, a lot of the process or act of drawing is the same where you're, you know, fiddling around, you're starting with a blank page and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. the only thing that changes slightly is, you know, your confidence, you know, and uh, 
your your uh, uh, proven track record and stuff. Yeah. I think while doing the art, I, while drawing, I don't feel that much confidence. Yeah. I feel confidence after the fact from having done it many, many times, and that's nice. When I go home to, you know, to see my family, yeah. I know you could work. You applied yourself and you did it. Yeah. You know? um, I don't even know actually if I look, look back on the art I did today and be really happy with it. I just know that like, good work, you applied yourself and made yourself, um, yeah. made yourself do it. So that, that's nice. But the confidence is more like a feeling pride that you applied yourself and you um, were diligent about it. But while doing the artwork, it's pretty much non-stop doubt. Moments of like, oh, great. You know, there's moments of it. Moments of like, maybe not confidence, moments of like, this fuck yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. You know? But then again, by the way, that is very fleeting and, um, and is there for a moment and maybe not there the next day. I've drawn things that I was really happy when I finished them and I come back the next day and think, that is dog shit. What were you thinking? And yeah. then I've had the opposite where I was drawing, doing something that I hated nonstop the whole time I was drawing it. And then I saw it a year later and thought, oh, that's actually all right. I did that. What yeah, the hell? Yeah. Or other people have told me they love a certain thing. And I'm like, really? That's the, yeah. something I agonized over and I could never, I like carved and carved and carved at that yeah. piece trying to make it work. And then in the end, I was just like, oh, fuck it, it's done. Yeah. But I don't like it, but it's done at least. Right. And then someone else tells me that they, they like it. You know, it, it is that battle. It is that constant, like, mm. you know, I, I'm sure that ethos or that story played out from like panel to panel, you know, of like, yeah. oh, I like this panel. I don't like this panel. Yeah. And it's going to flip flop back and forth until uh, whatever the thing yeah. is, you know, whenever it's finished. Yeah. It, it, again, I, I think one of the most common things I see in students is not a lack of technical skill or anything. It's more of a like a questioning of, of if what they're doing is worth it or not. Yeah, it has to be worth it unto itself. I think if you go into it thinking it is a career, that's cool. Um, and I, everyone needs to make money, right? Yep. We need to feed ourselves. And, you know, we've got to, you've got to give value back to the rest of the world. It's, that's, that's all cool. But the pursuit has to be satisfying, yep. enjoyable, rewarding unto itself. And, I, you know, the brutal reality is for some people, I don't want this to be demotivating, but here we go. Uh, some people may be thinking only of it as a career. Yeah. And therefore worried that like, am I, um, will AI replace me or whatever? Or will someone better come along? You are, you're not necessarily doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. You know, the right reason is because you love the thing. Now that's easier said than done. But you can make yourself love the thing. You have to, it's just like, I don't know how you do it. I wish I knew how you do it, but yeah. it can happen. Right. Yeah. It's almost like not your choice, you know? And I, I, I would say that like, People love cookies, you know, yeah. and it's like, I, I would say people love art in the same way. It's like there's something in your brain that just yeah. goes, you know, like we were talking about N.C. Wyeth and stuff and how you almost had like a religious experience with N.C. Wyeth stuff. And you almost had no say over whether or not that was going to be a religious experience or not. It just, mm. it just took you and grabbed you in a way that was completely yeah. out of your control. Yeah, I knew I loved his art from the images I'd seen, yeah. from the prints and books and so on. Yeah. But um, seeing it in person, it's like that just... Yeah. It was, yeah, like a revelation. Right. It felt holy in yeah. a weird way. The closest I've ever got to that is someone who's not very re not religious at all. How do you enjoy the work for itself? Because that's it has to be that. You have to enjoy the work. I think you have to also accept that sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? That, which is a sucky idea. But then at that moment, you might need to, if it really can't happen, you n might need to go and do something else, at least for a while. It really is work. You, you've got to work through it. You've got to think that this must be if it really does call to you inside and feel like it you, you know it should be worth it then it is just work you've got to grind at it i think of the um musician josh homie from um kaya kaya some queens of the stone age what work ethic if it is going to turn up because you've got to make yourself available that's the yeah. muse thing again right you've got to, the muse is just waiting the, the magic is waiting to happen yeah. but if you're not if you don't make yourself available for it it won't come yeah um and and that's it um so you've got to make a decision, Do I, am, I, am I doing this because I love it? And yeah. even if you're not enjoying it in that moment, you just apply yourself anyway. Yeah. You know? um, and put it out there as well. Uh, I think that sharpens you. Like most, you know, if I was being super, super pure about it, I would say, like I said, when I finish my book, me and the universe are even. I'm, if, yeah. no one, if, the, if no one ever saw it, uh, that would suck. But um, I could deal with it because I got the value out of it. Yeah. You know, I would, I would live with it. So you've got to have that 
if you can make that happen, that you and you and the work like, are good, that you tried and you tried and, and you made some you made something of your effort, yeah. then I think you'll you'll be you'll be fine, right? Yeah. And then, but on the other side of that, showing it to other people is how you end up getting paid. It's how yeah. you you know feed yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. But it has this other thing of it's it is competition is good. Competition yeah. is great. You know, like it will make you work even harder. Right. Not necessarily trying to beat other people because what does that even mean in the world of art? Yeah. But um, it's trying to not feel inadequate. I don't know. Trying to like yeah. um, make the work inspire other people. Yeah. It is a good thing that 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 competition. So, yeah, you've got to try and show it to other people if you possibly can. It's hard. Yeah. Um, I think even I probably part of why I don't show my work when I'm working on it to a lot of people yeah. is I want it to be very pure. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Well, I'm, you know, it, 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 it seems like your ability to cope with risk and not lose your identity when you like when you have the successes, it's very easy to create art. But when you're not having successes, it's very difficult to create art. Mm. I think it's uh, trying to deal with the two imposters, the one where you feel like you're a complete piece of garbage and should yeah. stop drawing or the one where you feel like you're the best artist in the world, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you, you like everyone exists somewhere in the middle. And I think, uh, well, they go backwards and forwards between those. Yeah. Two yeah I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm more that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think other. I am too, actually. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and it's like, no matter who you are, you're going to experience a huge amount of failure, you know, and, and no matter how, how big the projects you've done before mm-hmm. or, or after or whatever, um, and your ability to, uh, open yourself up to the muse and that potential, mm-hmm. Uh, that's the thing that uh, I think lets projects get finished more so than anything. You know, yeah. you're kind of stepping outside yourself. And as far as online, probably the Instagram. I think it's Greg underscore Broadmoor. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at social media. Yeah. Um, that's probably the thing. Uh, I don't have much on social media to be on, on the internet. I used to do a blog years ago, but I haven't touched it in, yeah. in years and years. Never done an art station or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you can, follow, you can follow me on Instagram. That would be nice. Yeah, cool. Very sick. You can put it up there? Yeah. Cool. Pause it there.